If you play RPGs on a virtual tabletop such as Foundry, you are going to want to set up a landing page. Guarantee it. What is a landing page? Well, it's this. Think of it as sort of a main menu where all of your players are going to start each session. You can come back here and click on links and pictures that will pull up nice notes and uh, maybe bestiary entries or loot entries that they can kind of sort through. Now, yes, they can access all these features from anywhere in the VTT, but it's nice to have uh, an aesthetically pleasing landing page. This is the one that I have set up here. And as you can see, it's just a nice table with like a map. We've got the character cards down here, uh, an archive link down here, journal, bestiary, and friends and foes. Now this is more than just a picture because you can double click. Any player can do this. You can double click on any of these. Let's do the map. And it'll bring up, in this instance, True Now, the starting uh, town that this campaign is gonna take place in. Go over to friends and foes, and that's gonna bring up a whole bunch of the citizens and people that they know. Journal can bring up their uh, individual journals and then even these cards down here each player can double click on a card and it'll bring up their character sheet now before we even get into the specifics of setting up a landing page inside the virtual tabletop you actually have to create one and that's what this video is going to be about now first and foremost what you're going to need to start is a blank template to create your landing page on you can use anything that you have on hand you could even start with just a single color of a page you know maybe something that looks like parchment and you can kind of draw on it from there uh, but in this case I'm going to be using this image I'll leave a link in the description for where I found it and we're going to take this and build off of it you notice it's basically the same as what we had in the VTT but we've got a lot of images to add on to it so once you get your template for a landing page you're going to want to start taking captures of everything else that you think you're going to want to put on there you know maybe uh, get yourself a copy of the map if you want to include a map uh, images of each character for the cards All sorts of different things you can put on there once you have your base image You're going to need to edit it now. You could use Photoshop, but if you're like me who doesn't want to have to pay for that You're gonna use Pixlr So once you have everything you need you're gonna simply open an image on Pixlr You have to find where you've uh, put it in your folder and in this case. Oh boy I've got a lot of these It'll be this one right here you could open your image and uh, the option I use is Full HD. Click Apply, and here we are. And you're going to see a lot of different things pop up, but mainly what we want to focus on right now is on the right side here is Layers. This is how you're going to be adding other images, in this case, on top of your landing page image. Everything that you put on here, you want to make sure that it goes on top. So we're actually going to do that. So we'll hit Add Layer, and we click Image, and it's going to bring this whole thing up again. So let's go ahead and do, we'll do one of these characters here. You open up any image that you've got and here you are, it adds it on top. Now this doesn't exactly look like what we had in the VTT, so we're gonna have to do some editing. So the first thing you wanna do is just resize it. You got these bubbles on the side here. Get it to the size that you want. I usually like to tilt them to kinda get it to match the alignment of page and we'll put it right there awesome so that's how you add other images in now if you go to the left here we're going to look for cutout it's the scissors now this is how you're gonna get rid of all these white edges so cutout lets you uh, remove portions of the image and kind of blend it in several different ways uh, if you go to draw cutout you're gonna get uh, a little circle here and you can actually see it right here and it's gonna let you sort of periodically just scratch whoops there's another thing to watch out for make sure that you've actually got uh, the layer selected here so the reason that didn't work was because I had if you see on the right here uh, the map selected but we want to make sure we have our image selected so if you're doing it the right way this is the result you're gonna get just by sort of drawing through and it's gonna erase everything it's gonna erase everything that you draw on. now you could just you know, sort of periodically go around each image and fine detail it down to the point you want, which sometimes works. But in this case, we want to take out huge chunks of this and leave just the outline of the character. So fortunately, on the left, there is a magic cutout option. Now this is going to give you different results depending on what the actual picture is. But if we just click on any general area we want to erase, it's going to do that. Now that's a huge leap forward, right? Once you get it to the setting that you like and you've got most of what you're looking for out of the way, 
you can go ahead and go back to that brush and start cleaning up the edges and you'll be able to wash those away however you like. Now here's another good example of how the brush and the cutout tool can work. If you've got an image like this, a PNG, where the background is a solid white color and then the actual image itself is something drastically different, you're gonna get better use out of the magic cutout. You can actually bump up the tolerance. Let's do it to 100. And as you can see, it's erased none of the actual image, right? There are some areas that are locked off in the middle here. So just make sure you click on those, but there you go. That's a super simple way. And when it comes to adding text, that's easy as well. You click on the add text box on the side here, create new text, and it's gonna give you a little box. You can put whatever you want in there. From there, you can resize it, you can move it, you can change the color. I usually do black because that shows up on the parchment better. And then you've got a whole bunch of different fonts to choose from. You can resize it, you can align it left or right, all uppercase, bold, all that sort of good stuff. You can even give it a curve. All right, so you have your landing page, you've put it into Foundry, and at this point, it's just an image. It's a backdrop on the canvas that doesn't have any interactable features with it. So we need to set that up. So you're going to need one module downloaded for Foundry. It's called Monk's Active Tile Trigger. I'll leave the link in the description. But what this, what this module lets you do is set up triggers or tiles that can be clicked on. And all we have to do is make sure that the image that's set for these tiles is a invisible picture, a transparent token. So we're gonna click on these three cubes here. This is tile controls, and this will let us draw new tiles. Now you can see when we're in this mode, we can actually hover over where these tiles are and see them as they come up highlighted. If you're on your token controls, you're not gonna see them when you hover over. So if you click on the cube, this will let us place a tile and you can drag and drop. So let's say I wanted to create an effect that would happen when someone clicks on this pile of coins. We'll draw the general size of the tile and it's gonna create it. Now what we need to do is set up a, an image that again is a transparent token. So I, I'll leave a link for uh, where I found this one as well. Uh, let's see if I can remember actually where I put it. I believe I put it here, landing, right there. So this is essentially just an invisible picture. It's nothing, right? Now the reason you have to do that is if you don't put a transparent token as the image here, uh, it's gonna come up as like this you know, semi-transparent gray white tile. And that's gonna mess with the way that your landing page looks. Anyway, so once you've got this down, we'll double click on it again to edit it. We need to set up a trigger, something that will happen when somebody double clicks on it. So you're gonna go over here to triggers. There's gonna be a lot of different options. What we wanna do is make sure uh, that we've got the restrictions lifted. So if we want anybody, anybody to be able to do this, we need to make sure that it's not set for GM only. And then also what kind of uh, action will trigger it. In this case, a double click. Now what's going to happen when someone double clicks on it? Well, you're gonna go to actions. We're gonna add an action and you can set up multiple actions for the same trigger. And we're gonna get a whole list of op options here. In this case, we would want it to open something. So let's say, I'll create a journal entry here called loot. So let's say this is a massive uh, collection of all the loot that the party has found. We want that to open whenever someone double clicks on this. So we're gonna go to the action list and look for open a journal. And now it's going to give us the option to select a journal. If you click on this target here, everything will kind of minimize because we're in selection mode. So all we have to do is go over, find the journal that we want to open, and there we go, it's set it up there, loot. Now, this is also important. Show to everyone is gonna be the default set. That means no matter who double clicks on this, it will pull this up for everybody, which can be annoying. You know, If one player opens the loot sheet, it's gonna pop up for everybody, Game Master included. We don't want that. So we're gonna set this to triggering player only. That means whoever double clicks on it, they're gonna be the one to see it. And we'll hit update and update tile. Now before we go to double click on this, make sure that you're back on your token controls. Now once again, the squares disappeared, we can't see anything. And as long as we click within that token, boom, it'll open up whatever you've set the trigger for.
Now you don't have to set the triggers for journal entries. With these, I've uh, set it up for each individual character sheet, right? And then these are obviously journal entries uh, in and of themselves. Now the only one that's a little complicated is going to be the archive. I'm going to explain how to do that. So by default, you can't open uh, an external window inside Foundry. You're going to need another module for that, which is Inline Web Viewer. What this will allow you to do is open up windows that are linked to websites. Now, in general, as long as the website doesn't change its address, you shouldn't have to update this quite that often. So I only use it for sort of official things that I'm going to need, like in this case, the archives. So once you have that module installed, you need to make a macro because what we're going to do is set this tile to trigger a macro. And that macro itself will actually trigger opening this window. So here's the command. Pause if you need to read that. I'll also post it in the description below. But you're going to take this macro, and inside the quotations of the parentheses uh, is going to be the URL for the website that you want to open. Again, in this case, Archives of Nethys. So once you have that macro set, you go ahead and save it. Now you see it's right here. If we just execute it on its own, it has the same effect. It opens up the window. So that's what the macro does. So for this instance here, when we go to our actions, you'll notice that it's not actually calling on a journal entry or a character sheet. We're telling it to run a macro. And when we do, we have to set which macro it is. You'll do the same sort of thing, select an entry, and then it'll ask you, okay, you know, click on whichever macro you want. You can just simply click on the one you have saved on your hotbar, and it'll set it up. And then again, make sure it's only set for the triggering player, and you're good to go from there. And there you have it. You've got all your tiles set up. They're invisible. They have links to different uh, journal entries or websites, and you can just take this in any direction you need to. You can even add lighting effects. You don't need extra modules for that. That just comes with the uh, VTT. And yeah, that's how you set up a landing page. Uh, if you learned something new or if you like what you saw, please leave a like. Maybe consider subscribing. You know, I'm going to be doing a lot of this kind of stuff, giving tutorials on how to set up different things in Foundry because this, this system is really, really flexible and there's a lot you can do. And thanks for watching.